Protectors of the Sunnah. Sunnah Baba. Protectors of the Sunnah. Welcome to another session of our series entitled The Messenger. And this is the series where as we are discussing the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but not his life story. We're discussing him as a man. We're teaching his attributes, the truths of his prophethood. And today we're going to speak about the predictions he made uh, as to what would happen to his nation in the future. And many of those predictions relate to today. And the whole purpose of me doing this series is for you to get to know him as a human being, as a man, so that in turn you can develop love for him because we will never be a true believer until we love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than we do even ourselves. And just like with the Qadr of Allah, just like with everything else, Muslims all, any Muslim you meet will claim that they love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if you look at their actions, look at how they're living their lives, you will see that this love is contradictory. Because if they loved him, they would do what, what he said do. Allah said, obey me and obey my messenger. You will see that the men would grow their beards and stop trimming them. You would see that the men would provide and maintain their families. You will see that men would be more patient with their wives. You will see that the women will uh, do the things that Allah commanded them to do. The women would spend more time in their homes instead of the shopping centers and the streets. The women will spend more time at home than even the mosque. And this is a big innovation that we see today, but it's also one of the predictions that our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made that the women will end up becoming the guardians over men to the point that women will be the ones controlling the masjids. That's what we see happening. You know, the masjids are run by board of directors now and look who's on the board of director. A lot of masjids have a bunch of women on those boards. We were just talking about that. That ain't your job as a woman. Let the man take care of the mosque. Your job as a woman is to take care of the house, your family, to stay in your home and guard yourself, number one, and your family, you know. But, you know, this is one of the predictions that the prophet made. He said the women will end up being guardians over the men. The women will end up being guardians over the mosques, and that's what we see happening. So uh, let me put the PowerPoint up for tonight's discussion on the screen. Uh, we're going to speak about these predictions, uh, some of the predictions that our prophet Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made. And also uh, these predictions are also signs that he was indeed a true prophet, that he was indeed a true a prophet of Allah, because uh, 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 only one that can only Allah has knowledge of the unseen. And Allah does not give that knowledge to anyone except a prophet or someone that he chooses. So this is the uh, 12th session of this series. And it's based on the book. We're using the book entitled The Messenger. And this book is compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. And uh, you want to go to his website, www.adlionline.com and order, click in the search, The Messenger. This book should be a part of every Muslim's library here in America. And the book only costs, what, $10? There's no excuse for you to not be able to uh, purchase this book. And Sheikh Atley always sends uh, free books as a gift. You know, so please guys, if you don't have this book, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite books that he has out because it will teach you, it will give you an insight into the life of our prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And today we're gonna to focus on his predictions for the future. Now, first of all, 
the prophecies of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are looked upon today and even today are considered to be miraculous because they all came true and they still are coming true. Each day, more and more of his prophecies are manifesting itself. Each day, we Muslims today, the scholars of Islam today can see, oh, wow, the prophet was speaking about us. He was speaking about this generation. And all of this further proves that the knowledge he was given came from Allah. And one of the prophecies that he made was right before he died, he told his daughter Fatima that she would be the first of his family to follow after him in death. And she died. He, sure enough, six months after he died, she died too. So that was one of his prophecies that came true. Also another prophecy, there was a woman named Um Haram and uh, my cousin Mukhtar uh, spoke about her with you guys. He was the aunt of Anas ibn Malik. And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to come to her house and she would fix him uh, 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 dinner. And then sometimes he would lay and take a nap just to rest. Well, one day he was at her house and took a nap and he woke up and smiled. And she asked him, what are you smiling for, O prophet of Allah? He said, I had a dream. And in my dream, some of my followers were, uh, were fighters in the army of Allah. And they were on board a ship. They were uh, going somewhere on a ship. He said, and they looked like kings on thrones. And when he said that, Um Haram said, oh, Allah, oh, Allah's messenger, ask Allah to make me one of them. And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled and told her, you will be one of them. In fact, you will be the first amongst them. And 40 years later, after the prophet had died, 40 years later, uh, under the caliphate of Muawiyah, uh, this is when the Muslims uh, conquered uh, Cyprus and they sent ambassadors to Cyprus, uh, uh, Um Haram went along with her husband. They were the first to arrive there. And as soon as she got off the boat and got on her camel, the camel, she ended up falling off the, I mean, her horse, she ended up falling off the horse and dying instantly. So she was the first to be martyred in Cyprus when the Muslims went to conquer Cyprus. And when that happened, everybody said, oh my God, the prophet said that she would be on a ship and this would happen and her grave is there today. So this was another a prophecy that he made that came true not long after he died. And then we have another prediction that he made. Uh, Abu Huraira tells us that some of the people amongst the companions of the prophet said one day, O prophet of Allah, who are the people whom Allah mentioned in the Quran when he says, if we turn away, they would replace us and they will not be like us. Who was Allah speaking about in that verse? This is a verse of the Quran where Allah speaks, is talking about how uh, the Muslims would come upon, the companions would come upon a different people. And if they turn away from those people and not welcome them, those people will replace them and the people are, will be, not be one of them. In other words, they won't be Arabs. And when the person asked this question, Selman, Selman was the Persian. Selman el Farsi, uh, Mukhtar gave you all his story. Selman el Farsi was sitting next to the prophet. The prophet patted his leg and said, That verse is speaking about him and his companions. And by the one in whose hand is my soul, if faith were suspended, then it would be reached by men from Persia. And this came true. What the prophet was speaking about was the coming of the scholars from Persia. And those scholars came to Arabia. And who was one of the scholars from Persia? Imam Abu Hanafi. For those of you who don't know, Imam Abu Hanafi was Persian. So uh, that he was one of the first imams of the religion, Imam Hanafi. He was Persian. So that's a prediction, you know, that the prophet made. Okay, subhanAllah. Also, 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also foretold the division that would occur amongst his companions. Before he died, he told the companions that you all will separate and divide and fight against each other. They couldn't believe this. But when it happened, they said, oh, my God, here's another one of his prophecies. We have the Hadith, whereas when Muawiyah uh, became the caliph, he stood amongst the people and said, beware. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, beware the people of the book before you. They were split up into 72 sets. And this nation will be split into 73 and 72 of those sets will go to hell and only one of them will enter paradise. And the one that enters paradise is the united body of Muslims. So here the prophet foretold the companions and Muawiyah remembered it. You know, this is after the, the Quraysh had converted to Islam. You know, this is when the Muslims, you know, thought that they had never seen so many Muslims before and their army was so great. The prophet said, don't sit here and become arrogant because the time is going to come when you will divide into over 73, 72 sets. I mean, you will divide into over 73 sets and all of you will be in hell except for the one that stays upon this body. And one of those groups which the prophet prophesied was the Cotteria. And you guys are learning a lot about this group. You know, uh, because many of you come from this group. We talked about this group today. Those Muslims who go around saying that they don't have to practice Islam because Islam is in their heart. You know, my faith is in my heart. These are also the people that deny the Qatar of Allah by saying, what's the point? What's the point in even striving when Allah has already determined who's going to be in paradise and hell? Well, the Qataria were one of the groups that the prophet prophesied. Ibn Umar said, the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said the Qadariya are the, the fire worshipers of this nation. If they are sick, do not pay a visit to them. If they die, do not attend their funerals because they're not believers. They're not Muslim because their belief system is corrupt. They claim to believe in the Qadar of Allah, but they don't. These are the people that say, you know, they don't have to practice. They don't have to uh, try for paradise. They can do what they want and live off a grain of faith. You know, the prophet predicted them. OK, so that's another uh, this is another one of his famous predictions, you know, that he gave uh, before he uh, died. He also predicted that we as a nation would become weak. And the confederations will form against Islam, which is still happening today. We have the hadith where as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the people will soon call one another to attack you, Muslims, as people do when they invite others to come share their meal. And somebody asked, when, will that be because we are small in numbers, O Prophet of Allah? He said, no, you will be in great numbers at that time. But at that time, you will also be scum and you will be rubbish like that, which is carried down by the rain. And Allah will take away your fear of him and, and, and it will take away fear uh, uh, of your enemy. And the last thing that will remain in your heart is nothing but love of this world and dislike of death. He was talking about us. The companions couldn't figure out, what do you mean? Well, look at us today, guys. There's more Muslims than ever. Here in America alone, one out of every 10 people claims that their religion is Islam. But look at us. We're scum, just like he said. We're dirt. We're trash, you know, because we don't have fear of Allah. We're committing sins. We're fornicating. We're adulterating. We're robbing. We're stealing. We're doing drugs. We're doing the same thing that the non-believers do, but we claim that all we need is that ounce of faith, okay? And we will be afraid to go out and fight in the name of Allah, to truly struggle and fight, you know, in the, in the way of Allah. So he was talking about us. This hadith is talking about us. We are the rubbish of this nation right now. 
And also the prophet made predictions about the years of treachery. He said there will come to you years of treachery when the person who lies will be viewed as honest by others. And the man who is truly honest will be looked upon as a liar. Those who are traitors will be viewed as faithful by you. And the truly faithful people will be looked upon as trailer, tra traitors. And the Ruwaybida, the Ruwaybida, the Ruwaybida will decide matters. And somebody said, oh, prophet, what is, who are the Ruwaybida? He said, they are vile, corrupt people who will control your affairs. Who was he talking about? He was talking about us today. He was, this is another prediction made that relates to us today. Those of us who teach true Islam, like me, my website, we teach Islam and its truthfulness with the understanding of the companions, but we're looked upon as being vow. I'm looked upon as being mean. I mean, I have people whose children uh, cry and scream out of fear of my voice. I'm the terrible person. But you listen to these famous speakers who tell you lies about Islam, who tell you things about Islam that's not true, who sugarcoat for you. And you look at them as being your heroes when they are the corrupt filth of this earth, the rubbish. We're living in those days. People who are honest. Nobody likes to be told the truth. The truth always hurts. But because a person like me, I'm truthful, I'm going to just come out and tell you the truth about yourself, whether you like it or not. You need to study these, these classes, pay attention in class. But because I'm so brutally, that's what they call it, brutally honest, I'm bad. But you listen to the liars, the people who will sugarcoat to you and kiss up to you and lie to you, make you think that you know your dean when in reality, you don't even know what El Cotter is. He was talking about the days that we're living in, the days of treachery. We're surrounded by ruwaybida, vicious, vile men and women. You got women sitting up traveling around the world calling themselves scholars of Islam with arched eyebrows. They have the curse of Allah on them. They're sitting there teaching you about Islam when their eyebrows are arched. They're not even covered properly. They got on a pair of tight fitting jeans and a little top and a little rag on their head. That's not how a Muslim woman is supposed to speak. And what is she doing giving a lecture to a bunch of men anyway? We don't stand before men. That's a man's job. If you want to give dower, you give dower to the women. The women need it. The women need dower from a woman to learn how to be a woman. What are you doing traveling around the world giving dower to a bunch of men looking like a trollop? But you view them women to be scholars. Then the women that sit at home like me and give dower from our beautiful homes, we're the witches and we're dressed properly. We have on hijab, jilbab, beautiful, like Allah likes beauty, but we're witches. We're living in those days. That's the days of the ruwaybida, the days of treachery. Also, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said these horrible people, the ruwaybida, they will contribute in making things lawful haram and making things that are haram lawful, like music. They're telling you it's okay to listen to music as long as the music is produced by a Muslim. They call it Muslim nasheed, Muslim songs. This is haram. One of the companions tells us that he heard the prophet say, from amongst my followers, there will be some people who will consider illegal sexual intercourse, the wearing of silk and the drinking of, of intoxicants and the use of musical instruments as lawful. And there will be some people who will stay near the side of a mountain in the evening and their shepherd will come out to them with their sheep and ask them for something. And they will say to him, return, come back to us tomorrow. And Allah will destroy them during the night and will uh, cause the mountains to fall down upon them. And he will transform the rest of them into monkeys and pigs. And they will remain that way to the day of judgment. This has already happened. Look how many people in these, uh, in, in Indonesia, Malaysia, that part of the world, you know, 
This has happened. Mountains fall down on them and they can't find the people. All they find are a bunch of sheep and monkeys running around. When I saw that in the news, oh, the, all on CNN news, they're digging through the mountains trying to find these people. But all they see are a bunch of sheep climbing a mountain and monkeys running around. There's the hadith. Allah transformed them into monkeys and sheep. This hadith has already happened and it's happened more than once. It's happening all the time, you know, subhanAllah. Allah. So, you know, the prophet was speaking about our generation in these hadiths. The companions couldn't believe what he was saying because they could, they would never become these type of people. But he was talking about us, our generation. We are the generation of Ruwaybida. We are the filth, the rubbish, the scum of the earth right now. Okay. He also predicted that many of, of Allah's laws will be adopted. Uh, Allah's prohibitions will be adopted by the Muslims, such as fornication, such as intoxicants. Look at all the fatwas. You got these so-called uh, Islamic leaders issuing fatwa saying that medical marijuana is lawful. When Allah says that nothing that he made haram will ever become lawful. Also, uh, 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 homosexuality. That seems to be the big thing right now. You know, uh, different uh, everywhere in the world. You know, this sodomy has always existed, but it's legalized here in America. You know, you can, a man can marry a man, a woman can marry a woman. Also in the Muslim country, Dubai. Dubai is the one place where they allows the homosexuals to live together freely. You know, this is what Allah has taught, what the prophet was speaking about. We have a hadith where he said, people amongst my nation will, t t will make intoxicants and drink it under some other name that they will give it. Look at that near beer. Near beer. It's got just 1% alcohol, but any percent is still haram. Or like I said, medical marijuana. Instead of calling it the opium, the, the hashish, the marijuana that it is, you're going to call it medical hapish, hashish, medical opium, medical marijuana by giving it a, a, a medical name. Also, the prophet spoke about how there are two types of people of the hellfire who don't exist in his time, but they will come to ex exist. The one is a, a group of people that will walk around with sticks beating the people. And the other group are women who are dressed, covered, but they're still naked because they'll be wearing see-through clothing, tight-fitting clothing. He's talking about us today again. And Allah, and he tells us that the punishment for these women will be that Allah will cause their heads to become so big in that hellfire and they will never enter paradise. They will never smell its, its, its scent because they walking around dressed, but still naked. He's talking about the women today. These female speakers that y'all watch who got on jeans and a top and a little rag. These female women that y'all call speak uh, 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 scholars. These Muslim women walking around in a tight fitting body shirt and a skirt and a hijab, but your breast is emphasized. You women are never going to enter paradise until you change the condition of yourself and repent from that sin. And again, the companions didn't know what he was talking about, but it ended up happening uh, during the Khalifa of Umar. During the Khalifa of Umar, the women started going to the mosque and wearing see-through clothing and perfume, and Umar stopped the women from coming. Okay. Also, he also predicted that the people who will honor his example will be few. He said there will come a time upon the people when the one that holds firm to my sunnah will be like a person who's holding on to a piece of burning fire due to the division of his followers. In other words, for those of us who live the Sunnah, for those of us who practice the Sunnah, for those of us who teach the Sunnah, people like myself, people like Abu Usama, people like Kareem Abu Zay, you know, you know, you look at people like us and you look at us as being bad. We're strange. You no, know, we're fanatical. We're extremists. You know, we're the wrongdoer. 
You look at Shea Atley, who's fighting against innovation. He's trying to adhere to the Sunnah and protect the Sunnah. He's looked at as being a fanatic, an extremist. You know, you look at Sheikh Morsi, who honors, you know, the Sunnah, Islam and his truthfulness with the understanding of the companions. And you look at him as being, you know, a, a Salafi fanatic. OK, you know, so we're looked at as being people of the hellfire when in reality we few are the people of the truth that you need to listen to. And not those other people who are innovators telling you that you should, you know, do interfaith and try to accept the reality that we're in a different world, a different time. And it's OK to conform to the cappers and be friends with them and take on their customs and ways. They're the ones that's uh, leading you to the hellfire, not us. OK, so these are just some of the predictions that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made during his lifetime. And as you can see, even today, many of these predictions are becoming true. And that's why even the unbelievers, the, the scientists of today, they don't even deny that the prophet Muhammad was indeed a prophet and messenger because even they will say, how could he have known these things unless he was uh, in, uh, inspired by a greater being other than himself? All right, so I'm gonna stop right here for today. Next week, I'm gonna continue by speaking about some more of the Prophet Muhammad's prophecies. Supana kalahuma wa bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, so make sure that uh, I'm gonna log out on Facebook right now, but we'll be logging back in with Dr. Jamali in about 10 minutes, inshallah. So I'll be logging back on Facebook in 10 minutes, inshallah. Okay, let me take this recording too.